Okay, let's go. So we want to do a Celery Flask example. Um, this repo is missing a Docker file, but let's start running it just normally without a Docker file, and then we can open an issue to build that up. So we'll do the clone. The objective here is to get a Flask application or a Python application. It could be Django, it could be Bottle, it could be Flask. This example is Flask. And in the background, we're using Celery and the background task uh, solution. I'm going to follow the instructions to get the Flask app running. Whilst that's running, we'll take a very quick look at the, the main.py because it's very small and it only does one thing. When someone goes to the home page, which is just here, it adds a task. This task could be something that takes a long time. And that's important because that's the whole reason. Like, why do we use these background tasks? It's to perform things that take a long time so your user is not waiting. Maybe it's an upload, maybe it's sending an email, anything really. So it submits this job, which is just to add two numbers together, but it has a, a pretend delay and then it returns hello world. So let's just make sure that that's running as we want it to. So it didn't do what I thought it would. Uh, what am I missing? Let's go back to the readme. Pip install requirements. Where are I? Oh, I'm in the wrong one. So let's do the client again. Uh, CD, salary, there we go. Got the activated environment. There we go. Slow down a little bit. Cool, so Flask is almost running. Go, 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 go. Great, so Flask is running. And we go to the, the home page. Notice that we've got this big long wait. Why is that? Because we've not started the broker. We've not started salary yet. So let's start salary. So in a new window, we're going to activate environment first because we need that in order to have celery uh, available to us okay. so now we've got that activated and now we need to get the celery started so Celery is listening for events. The thing with Celery is it's not got a queue system built in. Sounds strange, right? You have to choose what queue system to build in. So you can, what's a queue? A queue is a, a something that you add items to. So we're adding background tasks to. The problem is Celery hasn't got anywhere to put those tasks. So it's trying to connect to them and it's also trying to put tasks onto the queue. Now the queue that we're going to use is just a simple, really small, tiny database called Redis. So we're going to start a Redis. Fortunately, I've been a little bit lazy here. I've not given very good instructions. Um, but to start a really quick Redis server, we can use Docker or Podman to run a Redis host, Redis. So that will listen on localhost. So now Redis. So now Redis is listening. I've used the networking equals host so that it binds to the public network on this computer. And we're hey, connected to Redis. Fantastic. See all those red, now we've gone green. Now when we submit a job, it's gonna it being celery, celery is going to receive that new task and it's gonna put it on the queue. The worker, which is listening in the background, we started earlier here, is going to take items off that queue and we're going to see it running. So let's observe that. Oops, cancel, there we go, running. So I've turned on the logging a bit more here. Now remember that we're not actually submitting any jobs at the moment. Why is that? Because in our app.py, we only submit a job when people visit the home page. So in order for the job to get added, we actually have to visit the home page in this application. In a different application, you might have a button that people press, for example. There we go. 
So if you just saw that very quickly, we had the, the task has been added and then about five seconds later, the uh, task was completed. So if we look at the response time, we get an instant response, well, five milliseconds, and the background tasks happens in the background. So that's the overview of Celery task queues, and how all the different pieces come together. Now, unfortunately, what's not here is the Docker container on this repo. So we're going to add a Docker container for it as well. But before I do that, I'm just quickly going to add the, the the run for the Redis container because it's a little bit lazy just to say start Redis without any kind of example especially when it's so simple to just do that. Use Docker. Use Docker. Issue to add a Docker container and self Docker file so that whole application can run monolithically. Save the word. Okay, cool. Good stuff. Let's do that. 